That's our audience. That's our audience. 13 years. They're never going to change. Never. Well, you know, our audience might be 13 years old. Oh, Last no. year we learned that I have a 14-year-old fan. I know. That you have a fan who was one year old when I started doing this. Yeah. They didn't even know how to poop in the potty yet. And it freaks me out because I have a nephew who's 14 years old, and I would not let him watch this show. I would not let him see what Aunt Tara does on Monday nights. Hey, Tara, what so... do you do on Monday? You're never going to find the fuck out. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, no. He's never going to find any. He's never going to think to Google Aunt Tara. Well, maybe one day in like 10, 20 years from now, he'll be just Googling the Internet and he'll come across the old recordings and be like, holy crap. My Aunt Tara is insane. And a potty mouse. <laughs> My sister watched one episode once and she was very upset. <laughs> we are not, she is not our target audience. <laughs> Why My two sisters, the one who watched is, they're, they're lovely human beings, my sisters, but the one who watched is like a straight up Westchester Ralph Lauren prep. Why, why did she watch like, we're it? We're very, very different. She only ever wears a French manicure. She has like Ralph Lauren sweaters and little coach loafers and a perfect little bob. And she's very normal. And so she was a little. Why did she watch it, though? I guess she was curious to see what I do. Like, it's a she show Googled called me. What the Fuck is Wrong with You? She Googled me because she wanted to know what would happen if someone just Googled like her family members. And uh, she said that I could be harmful to her career. I really doubt that. Yeah, I, I yeah, that my she... sister will never be on the show. She no. <laughs> well, maybe if she ends up in a story, you never know yeah. that. Yeah, that, but anything's she, possible. I don't think she's ever. Well, first of all, she's in bed by 10 o'clock. Mm. So she would never be up late enough to join us on the show. Because she keeps grown up hours unlike me we have an interest you don't want to shun her i love my sister she's a wonderful human being she's just a she's little just very preppy and normal unlike me yeah anyway so we've got some interesting stuff tonight we have a, a, a cornucopia that some of these made me just so happy just reading the pre basic premises of them not happy just I laughed. I, I couldn't help it because some of these are just amazing. And I like it when that happens. Um, so I suppose we should get this started. Let me do this. Let's get it started. Each I week, Catherine the Reddit. Oh, God, I fucked it up. The 13th anniversary and I fucked up the spiel. Damn it! <laughs> Each week, Catherine and the Radio Dead Air audience go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, brings it back here. A little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And I am I like our first story this week because it shows that, you know, I might not be a real honest-to-God professional news source, but even I can do better than the big boys sometimes. And um, this is a little brief one. But uh, just, I have to rub it in their face here. Um, let me get you the link. CNN host reports that uh, mankind has hunted the dildo into extinction. CNN international host Jonathan Mann undermined the point he was trying to make about climate change a bit when he offered up this particular example of previous, quote, man-made extinctions. We hunted the dildo into extinction. Speaking to a guest about a study that says many animal species won't have time to adapt to a rapidly warming planet, man says, quote, now extinctions, I don't have to tell you, have been part of the world for millennia, and man-made extinctions have happened before. I guess we hunted the dildo into extinction. He let slip before slowly realizing his mistake. <laughs> the CNN International clip also caught the attention of David Letterman, who worked the video into his monologue poking fun at CNN's, quote, most trusted name in news new status. Well, I mean, that would be news. That would be a sad, sad day. If we had hunted the dildo into extinction, I don't know what we're hunting them for. <laughs> Is there a big call for dildo pelts for coats? Yeah. I wouldn't wear that coat. Now I get this, this idea that I you certainly know, hope people aren't eating them. 
They don't come from factories. They have to go out in the wild and hunt them and bring them back and, you know, tan them and skin them. And that's how that's yeah. where dildos come from. Factory dildos are just unethical. You want a free range dildo, They're obviously. Little, little, little floppy. Corn fed and able to run around a yard. Just bouncing <laughs> along happily in the wild, flopping here, there and everywhere. A dildo ate my baby. <laughs> 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 oh god I mean, but that would be big news it would if the dildos had gone extinct that would be very big news oh indeed. yeah and probably reported by a very angry female anchor <laughs> or possibly a very sad anderson cooper Oh. It makes me sad what's happened to CNN because I used to literally watch CNN for like eight hours a day back when I had cable. Mm -hmm. That was my background noise. Like I wouldn't throw on music. I wouldn't put on a movie. I would just put on CNN and straight up watch that shit all day. And then they brought in Joel Zucker, Jeff Zucker, who was the programming head at NBC when such tragedies as the late seasons of Heroes happened. Oh. And... Jeff Zucker decided that CNN, fuck that public service journalism bullshit. We need ratings, motherfuckers. We need entertainment. And that's why when every, when, you know, everyone in the world was watching Wendy Davis filibuster in Texas on the internet, CNN was running a Piers Morgan interview about the calorie content in a muffin. And it makes me sad. Yeah. That, but at least we know the state of the dildos. Well, let's go on. I don't know why this word has become one of my favorite words, but it has. And strangely enough, it always keeps getting associated with people in various states of undress. But Rich. I love this. There you go. You know me so well. You know we're 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 in sync. You Few know? things make you happier than a naked rampage. I know. It's just a wonderful word. Man clad only in boxers allegedly goes on rampage inside pricey Beverly Hills eatery. Beverly Hills police said a man clad only in his boxers went on a vandalism rampage Thursday. Authorities said they received a call saying the man was destroying property and throwing glasses around the Eno. Teca Drago restaurant? Uh, it, I can't afford to say the name properly. Uh, officials arrived on scene about a minute later and got, a, got on into a foot pursuit with the man. Suspect reportedly ran uh, where he ran into traffic. He allegedly slammed into a car and damaged the windshield. Police said they needed a taser to bring the man down to handcuff him. At least half a dozen officers had to subdue, subdue the man. Um... Witnesses said he threw glasses at patrons, knocked over wine bottles, and shattered a TV screen. Prior to the rampage, witness said the suspect went up and down the street, creating chaos. No one could understand, make sense of what was going on, said Beth Braun, a witness. Uh, he was half undressed, bottoms gone. Did he show up that way? Or did this ha just happen? Just sp like, like, you know how Superman runs down the street and he pulls open his shirt? Kind of like that, only with not the Superman and more shit getting broken everywhere. I mean... Like, I'm... I'm... I'm, I'm picturing him trying to get past the Mater D. <laughs> it just says, no shoes, no shirt, no Mater service. The informing him that there's a dress code at this restaurant, and he'll need to put on a jacket. <laughs> I just... <sighs> but I like how did was he in the restaurant and went into the bathroom and took off his clothes and went on a rampage or did he somehow get into the restaurant in his underwear like and these are the things with this story they never tell you how it starts well if and that's a, important if a guy runs up in his boxer smashing shit are you really gonna try and stop him I'm gonna ask why okay me, but... sir but don't I'd get like to in... know how you came to be in your boxers smashing shit. Yeah, but don't get in his way because that I mean, unless he's green, because then he's the Incredible Hulk, and I'm just going to run for it. He's if you at I I bet you the response would be something like I'm the conductor of the poop train. That's the best you're going to get out of him at that point.
Would he be wearing a hat? A little conductor hat? No. But, you know, I honestly, whatever, it couldn't have happened to a nicer place. Because those, are those uh, uh, if, if it's at one of those high-end restaurants that have been like on, yeah, th th those are the kind of people who need a naked rampage to come by every once in a while. Just to remind them what Why? planet Amanda they Amanda Vines on. probably eats there once a week. Oh, damn. I don't think Hollywood restaurants are actually in any shortage of naked rampage. Yeah, it's... Uh... <laughs> Probably, yeah. Well, let's go from one coast to the other. We're bi-coastal. We're bi-coastal with naked from sea to shining sea. Man naked outside Capitol building preaching. All right. Like all Capitol, Capitol building? Capitol, Capitol building. Oh. Already. All right. Now, to start off, already... You're going to lose your audience because they don't like... I, I understand the people who, who like the preaching don't like the naked so much. That's my understanding. A uh, man was lodged in jail Tuesday morning after Lincoln police said he was standing... Oh, it's a state capital, But, you know, it's okay. capital. Uh, so was, I'm thinking the Secret Service would not be... put. Well, I mean, the Secret Service doesn't hang out at the Capitol building unless yeah. the president's there. But, yeah. you know, in general, I'm thinking Capitol Security ain't going to put up with that shit. Yeah. Police say he was standing uh, on the east balcony of the building around 7.20 a.m., naked and yelling obscenities. I mean, unless he was really excited and protesting something John Boehner had just done, because then it's brilliant. Police said the man took his clothes off, laid them on the ground, and began preaching aloud. Preaching about what? Apparently naked and... <laughs> Have you heard how great my fucking God is? <laughs> <laughs> what was he preaching about? That seems relevant. And yay. Because if he was preaching about why public indecency laws are a problem, then it kind of makes perfect sense. If he was preaching about the school lunch program... <sighs> less i just so. i i wonder why he had to get his dick involved is the thing we've been over this men <laughs> have to get their dick involved in everything i don't last i checked and, and and you're all pretty sure everybody wants to see it last i Who checked wants to see your dick last i checked i was a guy and i am very you know discerning about the audience for my penis well good i don't just you know it's 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 not exactly you know open to the public standing room only no cover charge you know seriously i don't understand i don't understand how do you add dick to preaching that just doesn't seem like it's conductive to the task at hand um catholic church has been doing that for a really long time that was bad that that was Tara. That was bad. But not wrong. <laughs> I was raised Catholic. And you wonder why your sister just is just yeah. That uh... speaking of kids, <laughs> this is another one of those. Why does it keep happening? Because I'm coming to find out when it comes to the show. Do you notice how often kids are not the problem? It's always their parents. Yes. Kids seem to be better behaved. Here it's we, frightening. Here the fuck we go again. Two women arrested after fight inside Chuck E. Cheese. <sighs> Brookfield Town of Brookfield Police confirm uh, two 28-year-old women were arrested after a fight broke out inside a Chuck E. Cheese. They say the two women were taken into custody on suspicion of disorderly conduct and battery. Investigators believe 20 people, just 20 people, were involved in a fight inside the Chuck E. Cheese. I'm going to say that again. 20 people were involved in a fight inside the Chuck E. Cheese. Now read the reason. That they believe may have started because a child 
was taking too long to exchange game tickets for a toy near the end of the night, and parents waiting in line became restless. Officials believe an argument ensued, leading to punches being thrown, and police say someone used pepper spray inside the business and wait for the douchebaggery. Five people were treated for chemical irritation by firefighters. No one had to be taken the customer to the hospital. You pepper sprayed the Chuck E. Cheese. Because some kid was taking too long. Oh, newsflash, parents, kids are indecisive. And when confronted with an enormous wall of fucking toys, it's going to be a minute. Also, kids not before so... Before Junior figures out which of those bright, shiny toys he would like to acquire. It's going to be a minute. Because also, he's a kid, and yeah. that's Valhalla. And also, kids not so good with the counting. Yeah. So they, they're not... Math. There's decisions, there's a wall of toys. This is a lot of stimuli for a child. And it's going to take some time. And as a grown-up, your job is to be a little fucking patient and understanding. Okay, Sotoripu in the channel says, uh, but I need, uh, Sotoripu, but I need to know, was the ball pit involved? It doesn't sound like it. 20 p isn't that you know that's like when the wwf used to have those battle royales how did nobody in this situation step in and be like okay what the fuck like how is how did 20 people get sucked into this bullshit i'd like to think that at least one of them was sucked in trying to break it up do they but serve, i'm not optimistic do they serve beer at the chuck e cheese I don't think so. I don't think so. I know they do with the grown-up version, because there's a grown-up Chuck E. Cheese kind of, you know? It's not called Chuck E. Cheese. It's oh, like, like Dave and Buster's? That's it. Yeah, Dave and Buster's. Yeah, you can get lit and go to the arcade. Right. But they, wait, they do? They, they serve beer at the Chuck E. Cheese. No? Oh, yes, people apparently don't. Some of them serve beer and wine. Oh, that sounds like a bad plan. Suddenly, this story makes a whole lot more sense. It's true, though. Kids have their shit together so much more than their parents. Like, when I used to do yeah. work at the mall and we did trick-or-treat on Halloween, it'd be the parents trying to scam extra candy out of you, like, shoving a bag in your face without saying anything. The cute little kids would just come up trick-or-treat and they'd, you know, give them one piece of candy. They'd say thank you and go on their way. Yeah. Their parents, in the meantime, are shoving a bag in your face when they shouldn't even be trick-or-treating because it's the mall and we have limited candy and they're grown-ups and trying to scam shit out of you and arguing that they didn't get enough candy. And it's like, your child is showing you the fuck up. <laughs> Your three-year-old is a model of etiquette. You, know, you are an asshole. Monday morning, they're going to have to come into school. And, and so what did you do this weekend? We bailed out mommy. Wow. Mike has actually copied and pasted the Chuck E. Ch Chuck e. Cheese drinks menu. <laughs> and they have, man, that ain't. Pepsi, apple juice, iced tea, bottled water, milk, coffee, beer, wine. That's just a bad plan. Yeah. Speaking of beverages, we have uh, I, I'm getting I'm nailing the segues tonight. Um, it's Florida. Hey, hey, it's Florida time. Um, have you ever? I have in very busy times had to stop by places I don't normally go to do shopping like uh if i need groceries or something i'll stop by like a convenience store where it's like ridiculously expensive but i stop by there but i understand the trade-off here is they're not going to have the broad selection that i would get at a grocery store sure right um this guy didn't get that memo like your vegetables are going to be pringles and funions yeah. fort pierce man rearranges walgreens in beverage selection rant a man upset because Walgreens doesn't sell his favorite beverage was arrested after reports he rearranged merchandise and called an employee a, quote, female dog in absentia. 
The next sentence is masterful alliteration. The boisterous beverage brouhaha began before 3.05 a.m. July 4th. Say that six times fast. Boisterous beverage brouhaha began before. Boisterous beverage brouhaha began before. My my mouth is going to fall off. Um, (laughs) The manager... The manager told Fort Pierce police he saw a Richard Lloyd 60, 60, causing a disturbance to the worker. The manager said he tried to speak to Lloyd and that Lloyd informed him that he was angry because the business didn't sell his favorite liquid refreshment. This is what you need to sell, Lloyd is quoted as sta- starting to yell as he presented a bottle of soda. Quote, I want my money back. Lloyd approached the manager demanding a refund for a beverage. He didn't buy. I like the way they're, uh, I like this particular article's way of, um, G rating this man's language. <laughs> Police told Lloyd he was going to leave, to which he responded, Sexual intercourse, you, male masturbation. Sexual intercourse, make me. <laughs> really creative the balls on this guy he's a a refund for a beverage he didn't buy is some fucking cojones this is what you need to sell i want my money if you i'm sorry it's fucking walgreens they're not gonna have peach fresca okay i'm still trying to how did his brain go to i'm gonna get money for something i bought somewhere else here because they don't have it here i mean I went to the CVS the other day and found out that now in the state of New York, they can't sell you fucking nail polish remover unless you're over 18 and have valid ID on you. They asked me for my passport to buy nail polish remover. I have it's to say the meth heads are ruining everything. Same thing with the duster, the, the air, the air duster Did I for the, the computer. Fuck out and start throwing shit. No, I looked at the kid and he's like, I'm really sorry. And I'm like, well, I mean, it's not your fault. You didn't make the law, but that sucks for me. Yeah. I'll just buy everything else then. I just sometimes you don't get what you want. And could 60 years old. Somebody you would think by the time you hit 60 years old, you would learn to behave your damn self. Or you hit 60 years old and figure you've behaved your damn self your whole life and fuck it. You know that's gonna be me, don't you? Because at that point I'm be like, what do I have to lose? Yeah. Okay, the, the the next one is another just I'm scratching my head trying to figure out how this it, how this was supposed to work, how they thought this was a good idea. Because somewhere along the line, someone thought this was a great plan. And they they put a lot of work into it, and they went with... (sighs) KKK tries to recruit for Neighborhood Watch Program in Springfield. This happened in Connecticut, too. This must be like a national movement they're starting, because they distributed flyers in... um... Yeah, the same flyer, too. Illinois Nazis, it's man. Tonight we are watching. Nothing I hate worse more more than Illinois Nazis. Um, so but they did this in Connecticut too. It must be a national movement or something. Some neighbors on the city's west central side were surprised by a quote invitation that landed in their yards. Um, Steve Burchett came uh, to love living here on Olive Street, but on Sunday morning he went to get his paper. He found a scribing uh, discovery. I found a note in the front yard. It was from the Klan. That was for the name of the traditionalist American Knights of the Ku Klux Klan. Complete with the image of a hooded figure, the flyer attempts to recruit people for a so-called neighborhood watch program. It asks, are there troubles in your neighborhood? Contact the Klan today. All right, first of all, what I know of the Klan, it would mean that if there were troubles, I'm pretty sure what the Klan would do is show up and light a cross on fire. And make it a whole lot fucking worse. Yes, this would not seem to be a solution to my troubles. This would seem to be an escalation of my troubles. In fact, if the clan moves into my neighborhood, that's when I start considering my neighborhood to have troubles. 
Yeah, whatever. Is that that's pretty much all they do these days? They march and they set shit on fire. And yeah, they, I mean the Klan isn't exactly taken seriously yeah. as an organization anymore. I'm sure people they do terrible things to take them very seriously. I don't want to minimize awful racists. Uh, um, but as an organization, you know, there nobody really is looking to the Klan for discourse or assistance of any kind. I don't think. Oh, wow. This is probably the most unfortunately named news station in America. KY3 News then called the Klan line phone number provided on the paper. We talked to a representative, Frank Ancona, who told us his group has a national nationwide flyer campaign. Yeah. To get people to form or join Klan spots or neighborhood watch groups to help police fight crime. He said he wasn't sure if the flyer was distributed as part of an organized effort or his group or if they were distributed by individual citizen supports. Now, you know what I would do? I would go and find everybody in my neighborhood who was brown, black, yellow, red, all the other, col all the other colors that are precious in his sight. I would get all of them and go, you know what, guys? Go join up. I would love to see like 20 or 30 People of color, United Colors We'd of like Benefit. We'd like to help. Yeah, we'd like to help. Let's. Where's the nation? Where's the neighborhood watch? We'd like to be of assistance. We want to help fight crime. But like, think about this. Like, I I don't feel safer knowing that the Klan is prowling my streets, and I'm a fucking white person. Well, you, you're you're kind of like you know. You're not their target demographic because you don't have a penis. Well, yeah, I'm also yeah. not master race material. But... Yeah. But at the end of the day, I'm a white person. <laughs> Bolt loads. Hey, where do white women at? <laughs> that would, I would pay money. Ladies and gentlemen of my audience, if you are not a member of the Caucasian Persuasion and you get one of these flyers, organize your friends and your family. To join not, one of these places. I don't, I don't, I don't want anybody to get hurt. Well, don't go unarmed. Well, I don't want anybody to get arrested either. I don't, I don't think we want to encourage our audience to start shit with the clan. Okay. Let's, let's not do that. Let's okay. not create more Trayvon Martins or something. Okay. Like, just start your own neighborhood watch program. Watching the clan, watching your neighborhood. And for the love of God, please don't start shit with the clan and get yourself hurt. Yeah, don't do that. They're assholes. I think we can all agree on that. But just let them be assholes somewhere else. Unless they bother you first. It's like bumblebees. You know, this isn't the only person who thought they were going to help the police this week. You know these uh, superheroes that are, are popping up like Phoenix Jones and all the rest of them? Yeah. Normally, I kind of get what they're doing. Don't always support it. Phoenix Jones being one of the obvious ones because he kind of makes a mess of shit. But some of them I get, you know, they just help out their community. They, you know, they go to the soup kitchens. They, they volunteer. They wear the costume. It's cool. I get it. It's neat. I appreciate it. Um, but they're, you know, it's sort of like Captain Safety or, or you know, Neighborhood Man or something like that. Um, I, I don't think this guy has quite gotten... Is there actually the... a superhero named Neighborhood Man? There probably is. I, I, I don't... He's, he's in every headline ever. <laughs> Neighborhood Man does this, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't... He's taking credit for all kinds of shit he didn't do. This guy, however, I don't think, uh... North Liberty man accused of pushing one-legged man off scooter. And that sounds weird enough to begin with. But then let's get to the, the meat of the article. The man who claims to protect women under the monitor moniker, I shit you not, kids. Captain save a -ho. No, that's from Project Runway. Well, apparently that's he's... That's from something. There, used to, there was a black contestant on Project Runway who got involved like someone was yelling at one of the female designers or something and he was like you know i ain't trying to be all captain save a hoe but well don't ask me why i remember that it's from like season three this has become his his nom de plume he's allegedly been arrested again i love how they had to add again this time for allegedly pushing a one-legged man off his scooter 
36-year-old James Thomas Navarre of North Liberty is accused of pushing a disabled man off his wheeled mobility device. They say the victim fell to the sh street, received, uh, receiving cuts and scrapes to his left elbow and the stump of his left leg. Aww. According to the complaint, Navarre then stood over the victim, grabbed his face, and was, quote, disrespectful. They say Navarre was extremely hostile to the victim and witnesses, yelling and screaming toward them as he was being arrested. He was charged with a serious misdemeanor count for assault causing bodily harm. He was arrested for public intoxication in 2011 when, on the pedestrian mall after receiving multiple point reports of him harassing people. He allegedly told officers he was needed to, quote, protect women and goes by the nickname Captain Savaho. So here's the thing. If there is a one-legged man on a scooter who's harassing a woman, how fast can that one-legged man really be? I'm not sure he was actually doing anything wrong. Well, this is what I'm saying. You could probably just take that woman by the arm and walk at a brisk pace and diffuse the entire situation. Well, well, no, okay, because okay. How fast? Handy scooters don't go that fast. Oh, no, 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 no. This is my anecdote. I got one for an anecdote this time. I got an anecdote this time. Uh -oh. Okay, so I was at Dragon Con in 2004. And I was doing interviews, and I got a chance to interview Ann McCaffrey. And she was in a scooter at the time. And, uh, um, you know, because she was in her 80s, and she needed some help getting around the convention. But what I didn't under know was that a sci-fi, one of the greatest sci-fi authors of the 20th century, didn't understand that the little rabbit meant fast and the little turtle meant slow. And she oh. had it turned all the way to rabbit. And there was there were stormtroopers and hobbits and all sorts of shit flying the fuck out the way. And when we sat down to lunch, I would pay cash money to see that little old lady like mowing through fucking stormtroopers and shit. And when we we sat down to lunch, and they moved the chair away so she could pull her scooter up the table, she just gunned it, and I got in the way, and there is a nash shaped dent on the front of her scooter because I got slammed. Those things go fast, is what I'm saying. Okay, but, I mean, you can probably outrun it. Like, you probably don't need to dump the disabled person into the street, is what I'm saying. Probably If, if he's even really doing anything, which, who the hell knows? But you probably have ways of avoiding that situation without dumping a disabled person and in I the gotta street put, I gotta and put causing this... them bodily harm. Look at the douchebag expression on this guy's face. Just look at that fucker. Fuck you, dude. Just like, yeah, I'm Captain save -a -ho. I mean, Fuck does he you. have a uniform that he wears as Captain save -a -ho? Apparently not, because if he got arrested like that, that means he wasn't wearing a shirt when they brought him in. So, yeah. He looks more like a Captain save -a -ho in jars. Yeah. I'm just saying. I keep having a, like, I have a big light reflection behind me, and I keep having to, like, block it, so it doesn't look like I have a halo. He's just... He's a little creepy, isn't he? That is not someone I would trust to protect me from anything. No, like, if that man says, step back, ma'am, I'll handle this, I'm macing him. This, I've got to wonder about this guy's interior life, you know, what's going on in his head, because that that is just a magical break with reality. That is that uh, complete lack of fucks. There's it is it is mathematically impossible to express the number of fucks that do not exist. Well, I mean, I wouldn't say there are no fucks. I just think his fucks are seriously misplaced. He divided his fucks by zero. Like, he has the fucks. He just isn't appropriating them well. Eh. He's misappropriating his fucks. <laughs> I would love to see that be an actual thing, you know. You're charged with mis misappropriation of fucks. How do you plead? <laughs> uh, I just... Dude, come on. How is that... 
How in any way, shape, or form is this helping? This is not helping. It's a one-legged guy on a scooter, for fuck's sake. It's like... <sighs> Do you remember the pilot episode of Malcolm in the Middle? Mm -mm. Pilot episode of Malcolm in the Middle, like, he, he gets put in the smart kids class, and that makes him kind of an outcast at school, and he's pissed off about it, and he befriends this little black kid in a wheelchair in the smart kids class, and they're getting bullied. He's getting bullied by, like, the class bully because he's a smart kid and all. Mm -hmm. So it finally comes to a head out in the schoolyard, and the bully, like, gets in, his, in Malcolm's face, and he swings at him. And Malcolm ducks, and he the, the little kid in the wheelchair is sitting next to him. So, like, in the process of swinging, he just kind of, sort of, very lightly grazes the kids. And it's the funniest thing in the world. The kid in the wheelchair, like, he barely touches him, but the kid in the wheelchair just, like, looks left, looks right, and knocks himself over. <laughs> <laughs> So then the entire playground is like, oh my god, you hit a handicap kid! <laughs> the crap out of the school bully. Uh -huh. The kid at the schoolyard turns on him. And it's that one little moment, though, where like he barely gets touched, and he like looks left, looks right, and knocks himself over is like the funniest five seconds of television I've ever seen in my life. The, little, the actor that played it was brilliant. <laughs> and then everybody kicks the crap out of the bully. <laughs> I you're wish not, that it You're happened. that guy. You're that guy that yeah. hit the handicapped kid. I guess that's that's the first thing to don't hit the handicapped kid. Nobody you are not going to be anybody's friend after that. No. Nobody's going to want to play with you anymore. Well, okay, the maybe the superhero they're gonna... that gets to hit the disabled is what was it? Blank man? Damon Wayans did Blank Man or Handyman or whatever. Yeah, was yeah, a disabled like, superhero. Yeah, that he was. You get the disabled because he's yeah. one of them. It's a level playing field. <laughs> Batman does not get to beat up the disabled. No. Superman definitely not. No. We we learned this week that um, naked rampages will continue forever and ever. Amen. I mean, that was kind of a boxers rampage all right yes daredevil daredevil can hit the disabled i guess because he's one <laughs> this is Fuck. not a conversation we should be having now they're like what about oracle look i don't want to get into a pedantic discussion about which disabled superheroes can hit the disabled you're bringing up the blind green lantern you're really bringing up there's a the you know what this is this is the comic book equivalent of well can i use the n-word this way <laughs> What's it this way it doesn't matter <laughs> you are not daredevil you are not oracle so just don't be up disabled people Done. um we learned that when you are attempting to uh spread the gospel your dick does not need to be involved no you're spreading something entirely different then. Yeah. Yeah, that's... You're making a point just with your penis, and that's not not what you're going for. Um, we learned that kids are... I believe the children are our future. Teach them well and let them lead the way because their parents are fucking stupid. Because they're doing better than you. Yes! They know how to conduct themselves in public. They aren't busting out with a fucking Royal Rumble in the goddamn Chuck E. Cheese. <sighs> Jeez. No. Do not do this. I mean, that's... Do not fuck up your kid's birthday that way. You know, I had my birthday at a showbiz pizza when I was 10. It was awesome, because I got a Rodimus Prime. And my best friend and I went to Chuck E. Cheese with my parents. And and that saw... sounds like an extinct dildo. Rodimus Prime. Nah. Uh, he's, he's, uh. You're ruining my childhood, man. You're ruining That's what ruining. I do. Yeah, I know. That's what Me and Michael Bay. We learned that sometimes you have to accept they aren't going to have the soda you want. You know, I go into places sometimes that only serve Coke, and I keep my simmering rage inside. 
And I just order a fucking Sprite. Although, Tara, you got to come to Canada with me next next time. Because American Coke is sucks. Compared well, to yeah, my cousin Brian in Ireland, I said something about Pepsi throwback. And he said, what's that? And I said, it's Pepsi made without high fructose corn syrup. It's made with real sugar. And he goes, oh, here in Ireland, we just call well, it that Pepsi. Pepsi. Yeah. Because Dude. the rest of the world doesn't have the corn lobby. Yes. Putting corn syrup in everything. I went to Ireland and I looked at the label on the Pepsi and it said like sugar, carbonated water, color. It was awesome. I want to go. I want to start ordering Coke from Canada. Um, we've learned this week that, you know, the KKK. I don't. I. You're not neighborhood watch material. You're normally what we watch the neighborhood for. But you know what's fucked up is like, they honestly think they're doing good. Like, they're misguided and they're awful people, but in their twisted, fucked up brains, they think that they're helping. So you can't be too mad at them. Not helping. Because no. they think they're doing a good thing. Yes. And they don't realize that they're racist redneck throwbacks to a time that we'd rather forget. Mm. And it's sad. <sighs> Illinois Nazis. Like, you can't even beat them up because they're obviously disabled. 